So folks, what's one lesson I keep on going back to over and over and over again when it comes to old Donnie, but we gotta keep doing it because it keeps being relevant and there's more and more examples every day. It's that loyalty does not exist in his world. Loyalty doesn't exist between him and anyone else, and increasingly, he isn't being given loyalty anymore either. Remember, it's all transaction. Everyone that knows him well says everything in that family and business and politics is transaction. And right now, the entire family is in trouble. We're going to cover that. Some fallout and deep analysis on what happened yesterday, in particular with the family company being now officially designated because it's been found guilty, a criminal organization. But in particular, how Ivanka herself took a secret deal, made a side deal with prosecutors and the judge to protect herself as she abandons daddy and her brothers in a pretty significant way. But we have to set up the fact that they're all still in trouble. And maybe Ivanka's less in trouble now, but she's still got some hot water. And it's all based on the fact that while the company's been hit, the question remains about how in deep the family itself was with all of the schemes. File probes like this one. Bragg has said before that no one is above the law. This is the sort of work we do here at the district attorney's office each and every day. Ensuring that when a Manhattanite hands over money, that it actually goes there without any smoke strings. I led the team that held Trump and his children accountable for their misconduct with the Trump Foundation. In Manhattan and in New York, you will be held accountable for defrauding donors. I go where the facts go. Well, today a jury found the facts convicted the Trump organization. Now, as is customary during a trial like this, Bragg largely demurred in public, let the prosecutors do the talking in court. Tonight, he's now doing his first interview since the verdict right here on MSNBC on the beat. DA Alvin Bragg, thanks for being here. Thanks for having me on, Ari. What does this conviction mean? It's consequential in a number of ways. You know, first, we've got the former president's you know, namesake corporations uh, being convicted, you know, criminal convictions uh, in contrast to prior civil matters. Uh, and the broader message, right, this was a case about cheating, lying, greed, the arguments you heard in the courtroom. Uh, so the message that you, you played in the lead in connection with the Steve Bannon case, which we brought in other white collar matters, is that we have one standard of justice for all. Uh, we go where the facts take us uh, and we hold those accountable who engage in the kind of conduct uh, that these organizations did. You say you go where the facts are, and this is one of those interesting times where we had a witness on tonight, we had a, a pretty prominent attorney, but people were asking questions and making comments about why you've done what you've done with your power. So now you get to respond to what some of them raise and what you're familiar with, which is the legal question. If you can win this case against the Trump org, and you had all this evidence, um, why does it not lead to charging Donald Trump himself. So, you know, as I said back in April uh, in a statement, the investigation's ongoing. Mm -hmm. This is one chapter. Um, I caution people against reading ahead. Uh, we needed to focus on this uh, and do what I thought, I mean, the, 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 the public servants in my office, the superb job they did in the courtroom, that was the focus. Uh, but as I said, the investigation's ongoing. There are other matters why that part of the team was in court you know, for the world to see and putting these facts out. We had other people back advancing the ball in other ways. So the investigation is ongoing. Is this conviction the end of the story or a building block? Uh, we, we, we follow the facts and this is part of a broader uh, piece of work that we've been doing um, really since I joined the office in January and we're gonna continue it. I mean, so obviously we pause today because this is quite consequential, a criminal conviction for the, the former president's namesake uh, corporations, uh, but the work continues. The work never stopped. Uh, and we, we we're going to continue to do that. And there may be, um, I don't know, I don't want to get ahead of the facts, but there may be other moments when we can you know, report out publicly. In fact, I've committed to doing that when we reach uh, a conclusion, whether that's by indictment or some other uh, way of closing the investigation. With regard to Mr. Trump? With regard to Mr. Trump. In the trial, I, I referenced this and here's some reporting on it. One of your ADAs, so they're part of your strategy in this now victorious case, argued at the close that Trump had, quote, personal knowledge of the tax cheating 
carried out by executives, the ADA pointing to a document, I think we have this, initialed by Trump, that he called, quote, explicit proof of knowing his execs were tinkering with expenses to reduce their taxes. If you have that in court and you chose, and it's your office, you stand behind it, of course, to introduce that in the trial, doesn't that look to someone like Trump was in on it? So I'm gonna say his name. ADA Steinglass made that argument, did a superb job throughout trial, along with uh, Susan Hoffinger. Uh, and look, that argument was put to the jury uh, and put very well. Uh, the defense you know, was raising and kind of you know, putting out there saying that you know, Trump was not you know, really trying to distance Trump from this. And so in rebuttal, we said, look, who hired these folks? Mm -hmm. You know, what are their roles in the company? We're not talking about low level. We're talking about high managerial agents. You know, who set up the compensation structure? So that argument in the context of, of, of the trial was that the former president sanctioned this conduct. So you can listen to that. That's brag. Now, we've been critical of him. Many of you have as well. Maybe we should remain critical of him. But to his credit, he has gotten a Trump organization criminally guilty. Not a Trump individual yet, unfortunately, but it's a big step. It's something we've never, ever seen before. So this guy's made history by convicting the Trump company. But what he notes at the end there is really critical that, you know, they didn't want to make this about Donald because it's not really about him in a very strictly legal sense. Like we all know it is, but you got to follow the rules of the game and the company for whatever BS reason is distinct from the man, even though he owns like 99.5% of the company. It's not a, a publicly traded company. You know, he owns basically all of the shares of this company. It's basically a glorified personal company. But the point is, guys, when they started to bring up Trump on the, the defense side, they mentioned like, look, who's hiring all of these people? Who's signing these checks? Who's creating and then reinforcing and perpetuating and allowing to happen the corporate culture that has these sorts of schemes you know, going on every single day, seemingly? And that is Donald Trump himself and to a lesser degree, his adult kids. And here's Michael Cohen again. I want to bring him back in because he notes how big of a deal all of this is. Is and how it helps set up future charges against other people in the Trump organization, the company itself, but critically, Trump family members like Donald. And mm. so did, I guess, Jeff McConney, who is the assistant controller. Again, it doesn't hold Donald Trump accountable. So the next question that people should be asking themselves is what's next for Alvin Bragg? And in light of the hiring of the new individual, uh, Christopher um, what's his name, Ari, uh, the last name, uh, the new attorney, uh, he's going to continue to look at other crimes that have come as a result of yeah. this uh, investigation. Well, you raised several points, uh, Michael. One, there has been this new hire from a DOJ veteran. We'll put that up. The, the reporting on this was that Bragg hired this former DOJ official with a history of taking on Trump. The hire marks the latest turn in that long-running investigation. Uh, you mentioned what Mr. Bragg has in store. Nicole Wallace uh, alluded to this earlier. He's going to speak out for the first time on The Verdict tonight in a few moments here on MSNBC on The Beat. Um, so we'll get his views directly as someone who was... A witness in the case, as I mentioned, worked at Trump Org. I'm curious your view when we see a conviction on defrauding the government, on conspiracy, on tax fraud, on falsifying records at a place called Trump Org. From your time there, does that mean that Donald Trump himself would be in on those things? Well, one of the things that I had said, and I'm saddened that it had taken almost three years now since my House Oversight Committee hearing. Um, where I had individuals like Mr. Clay and Ocasio-Cortez and Jamie Raskin all ask me very substantive questions that are similar or identical to the issues that were brought up by the Manhattan District Attorney. Yeah. So the answer, as I gave then and I've given to 20 different organizations, whether it's congressional law enforcement, et cetera, there was nothing that went on at the Trump organization that Donald Trump, not only did he know about, but that he would also sign off on. Alan Weisselberg was not authorized to do anything. That's, of course, until Trump became president. And then he became the trustee on behalf of Don Jr. and Eric Trump. But Alan Weisselberg, during my tenure there, that came across his desk, he was very specific 
about having it documented on paper. You would then sign un- a line and then they would have Donald sign his either his initial or his name. So, yes, Donald Trump knew every single thing that was going on. Nothing got approved without his signature. You refer to that initialing process. It may sound like this is a bit in the weeds of the paperwork, but it's also where where you have to go digging to get the evidence. In the closing arguments, one of the assistant DAs referred to what you just said, that they had evidence, they held it up to the jury, showing Donald Trump's initial on exactly one of those pieces of, of financial misconduct, which is now tonight convicted in the state of New York. When you look at all that together and, and your personal knowledge, do you think they still would have a case uh, against Mr. Trump personally? Well, let me not say whether I would or would not. Um, how about you had Don and you had, um, what you call it, Mark Pomerantz, both believe that there was more than enough to indict Donald, Don Jr., right, Eric, Ivanka, and so on. Like, that's great, right? And you could see how everyone's in trouble. And here's where Ivanka shows herself to be daddy's little girl. And I mean that in all the worst ways. She is the most like her father in a lot of ways. Like, in some ways, she's not. She's more uh, eloquent. She's less brash. In some ways, the brothers are more like daddy in all of the bad ways. But in the cunning ways, in the way Donald Trump has a bit of cunning, it's all in Ivanka. And what she's done is she's gotten herself out of one of the recent punishments aimed at all of the family members, specifically the one requiring them to disclose every transaction they're making to the courts as they're being sued and the company's being sued by Letitia James. And she made this deal for herself and herself only, setting her brothers and daddy out to ocean without a paddle. And it says, Ivanka Trump won't be placed under the watchful eye of a court monitor who will oversee the Trump organization to prevent the company from reorganizing to avoid a fraud lawsuit. The AG's office and a state judge agreed to exclude the former president's eldest daughter from the recent order authorizing a retired federal judge to monitor the company's dealings to ensure it stops lying to banks and insurers. But Ivanka distanced herself from the company and her family in her filing reported the daily beast ms trump has no involvement for more than five years her lawyers argued in november 7th uh, ms trump has no role as an officer director or employee of the trump organization or any of its affiliates since at least january 2017 and so whether we buy this bs or not that ivanka has nothing to do with this and can't benefit from shifting assets or what have you. Like, regardless of whether you agree with the judge and prosecutor on this, she's been able to effectively cut a deal to plead and beg to the judge to exclude her, and it worked. And I'm not sure I necessarily agree with this, but what it does show is the family's already starting to crack. There's no united front here. They're trying to get better deals for themselves individually, and Ivanka just got one. And if she's willing to take a deal here, if she's willing to take a deal on just this question, Is she going to be willing to take a deal when it comes to actually avoiding the main charges, civil charges and potentially criminal charges down the line? I think the answer is yes. She's still in trouble. Don't get me wrong, but she just jaw dodged one of the bullets. And when she dodged it, it went right into the rest of her family. 